This is a monster. He got in a fight. Had the top of his his claw taken off, but check out that claw. That's a good sized mud bug. My goodness. Big ones everywhere. Big ones, every pull. Unbelievable. Look at that. Another big one. Another big one. They're everywhere. I gotta get them off my seat. They're falling all over. Hey Jerry, how you doing man? I'm doing great. Good, hey, welcome to <clears throat> Craster Crawfishing this year, man. What's going on? Well, on this episode, we're gonna be discussing how a Craster team member actually got involved and changed fish and game laws in their state. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, in addition, another, somebody involved with Craster wrote a book on foraging uh, crawfish and different seafood, and they've actually published it. That's yeah, sweet. Yeah. Heck yeah, man. We also have another Craster member that is, uh, he's aspiring to become a commercial craw fisherman out yeah. of the state of Nevada. Yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, and then another thing that, that's kind of interesting, uh, people are like, tag your traps, don't tag your traps. Mm -hmm. We're going to tell you why you want to tag your craw fishing traps. There's brand new Craster stuff coming out this year that we're going to let you know about. Man, what do you think, Jerry? <laughs> hey, let's check this stuff out. Let's do it. Got a little friend with me here today. I've got a little guy called Mega Claws. There are some monster-sized crawfish out there, lobster-sized crawfish. Have fun catching them, and I can't wait to see all of you guys' pictures this year. If you just found us and you're new to the Craster community, Mike, how did Craster get started, and how did it come to be? You know what? There was one kid that had this spark in his eye. He loved fishing, he loved crawfishing. He had to know everything about crawfishing. And that spread to the love of crawfishing within that family. And then that family, their friends started crawfishing. And then it, the community grew and it grew. Now, Craster is the largest wild crawfishing group in the entire world. And we have millions of people that, that come and communicate and learn how to crawfish, take their families on great times. You know what? It's amazing how something starts and over the years it just builds and people on our Facebook pages, YouTube channel, they make friends and we, we share information freely. Um, we've come up with better ways of crawfishing, we come out with products and different things, but really it's all about the relationships in the community. Now let's go check this out. So Jerry, what are we up to now? You know, we're going to give uh, John Studi a call. He's recently becoming a commercial craw fisherman. Nice. And he's out of Nevada. Excellent. But commercial, who would have guessed commercial craw fishing in Nevada? <laughs> Remember when we went to Arizona? There are crawfish in the desert. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, let's see. Hello? Hello John, how are you doing? This is Jerry and Mike. Oh, just fine. Glad to hear from you. Right, right on. So uh, we wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, you know, one, I wanted to know how uh, you came to be with crawfishing and, and what trap, how you started into traps and came across the Craster traps. Well, uh, the crawfish, uh, I live in Lake Tahoe and I was a water quality regulator here for 21 years. And the crawfish are considered uh, an invasive species and detrimental to uh, lake clarity, uh, the way they process nutrients kind of helps the algae to grow. And so I kind of was following a previous company who went into the commercial crayfish in Tahoe from 2012 to 2017, and then they kind of disappeared. And it left a void. Nobody was doing it for the last five years. Huh. And I kept looking into it, thinking, why isn't anybody doing it? <laughs> it's a really good business. <laughs> right. and, the, and the more I learned, the more I was committed to doing it. And then uh, last summer, uh, uh, I started experimenting with traps and baits. And so I got the Craster traps, which I found uh, just on the internet. And I was immediately attracted to them because I grew up in Idaho. And <laughs> I was comfortable come from Idaho so all uh, my family does so uh, I did experiments this uh, last summer summer of 
2022, uh, different commercial traps. And so there was a couple of brands that were two foot by two foot by 10 inch tall boxes with the, the conical ramp uh, entryways. Uh, and, and then I tested those against the, the, uh, the Snake River traps. And, and basically the Snake River traps are getting as much as more as the traps that were twice as big. And so from a you know efficiency point of view of how many traps can I get on my boat, I can get twice as many trap, you know, uh, 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 Snake River traps and get just as, you know, twice as many uh, crawfish as using the bigger traps. So that's kind of what got me into the, the uh, the crasters, and then after my testing was pretty well done, then I, I bought a whole bunch of uh, snake bird traps getting ready for next year. And the, the thing I'm going to do, you know, following the, the lead of a, uh, a PhD thesis that was done in Tahoe and published in 2016 uh, by a fellow, his John Umek, U-M-E-K, um, he used paired cylindrical traps. And, you know, he'd get a lot in both sides of the tra- you know, pair traps. So I'll be trying that this uh, starting out in, in April or May of this year of 2023. And so I've got about 30 paired traps right now. So, you know, as many as many Snake River traps as you ordered, you're going to be catching some serious crawfish. And you know, I, I think that you found um, kind of what we found. Uh, um, they are they're they're they catch a lot of crawfish for their size. We made them, you know, we made them just as efficient as they could be. Yeah, and that's the key. And 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 so you know, basically, I have to look at how much time do I have to pull traps in any one day. And if I can put two Snake River traps on one buoy, I'm pulling traps twice as fast. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Excellent. What did you think about? What did you think? Did you like the way they operate? Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, there was other decisions, you know, besides just they catch more. The the other thing was is I found them to be user friendly, to where the the way you get into the you know to open the hatches is 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 the way you've designed those springs. You kind of push on it with a couple of fingers, even the palm of your hand, and you push on it to get the hook loose, as opposed to like the the. Uh, uh, tomahawk, you have a clip that requires a lot of pressure pinching with your fingers. And I'm, I'm kind of advanced in my years, and I have arthritis. And pinching is the hardest thing to do when you have arthritic fingers. Whereas pushing with the palm of your hand or, you know, a couple of fingers or your thumb is quite easy. So basically it's easier to operate. The, the, the other thing that's easy about them is once you have the door open and you turn it upside down, you just tilt it left and then tilt it right, and they're all out. Yeah. When you have, when you have a big box trap, you got to tilt it several different ways. They get hung up on all the ramps, yep. you know, and and it just takes longer. And, and time is money when you know you're out on the lake, you know, commercial fishing. Heck yeah, man! What what do you plan on? Uh, what do you, what what are you gonna do with all these crawfish when you catch them? What what's kind of like your plan? Well, I'm I'm basically going to be selling, you know, to a wholesaler, you know, a seafood wholesalers and directly to restaurants um, in, the, in the local area. I can deliver myself to Reno, around the lake, and as far as Sacramento, uh, and, and I'll be doing that, you know, in person. But there's still possibilities to then grow into shipping, just like the Louisiana ones where, you know, you basically have an internet site and, and people are ordering, you know, over the internet. But that's... I'm starting out with restaurants that need a lot and have been buying from Louisiana and would like to start buying locally. You know, that's kind of my business model is there's quite a few restaurants that buy from Louisiana that would rather buy locally. You know, I, I heard, I've heard i heard two things that you said that were exactly true. Well, there's three facts. One is there's a lot of crawfish in the deserts. We, we shot a video in Arizona and we went and caught just tables full of crawfish when you know like i remember jerry and i driving through the desert and, and we're like we're like man there's like cactus where, where are we gonna find crawfish out here and then we go up in the mountains it's super pretty but i mean tahoe's beautiful and i imagine there's going to be opportunity with the resorts up there for you and the whole nine yards yeah yeah the the, the fellow people who did it you know five years ago ten years ago the, uh they had a couple of resorts they had harry's and uh, uh harris and harvey's uh and I, I think they may have had one down in reno too uh, and so you know that, that's a really good place the, a casino can put these crawdads on a buffet and attract a lot of people and 
you know, you know how they casinos want people in there is whatever they can do to attract people. They want them in there. You know, it's just like the the lost leader, free drinks. You know, whatever gets them in the door. You know? Yeah, and it's and it's and it's local food. And like you said, I'd heard the same thing. I heard that that you know, I, I my wife and I we watch uh, something called Naturescape, and Tahoe's on it, and it's so clear. But I heard that the crawfish, when they get out of control. Make the water mercury. Prove it to yourself just by when you bring some home and and you purge them, and the water gets a little cloudy. Well, that's the same thing that was going to happen in the lake. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> and, and there's there's estimated to be three hundred million of them uh, in the lake. <laughs> three hundred million. About, about nine million pounds is the scientific estimate how many are in the Lake Tahoe. <laughs> wow. Hey, you know what? Uh, one thing uh, we'd like to get up, uh, if if you'd allow, you know, this summer, we're thinking about maybe in July coming up and going out on your boat and and uh, maybe shooting a video with you. What do you think about that, man? Oh, that'd be great. That, that'd be great. Yeah. Let's it, plan on it. The, the, the other part of this is, is this isn't just, you know, you know, a spillway of a dam. This is Lake Tahoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I don't really have to think about paying decades. They'll pay me to go out there. <laughs> I love Tahoe. I've been to Tahoe many times. I love that. It's such a beautiful place, for real. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. I retired a year ago. And, and this summer I was out on the boat and I'm sitting here with my pilot house boat going, this is my new cubicle, looking around at the blue and the mountains and everything, this is my new office. <laughs> hey, John, I'll tell you what, I, I know one thing and we're going to wrap it up. I, I, this one thing I know, when it comes to seafood or any type of fish, the fresher, the better. And I know those restaurants are going to absolutely love your business. Oh yeah, the, the first restaurant I tried with, and, and their their sign up, I'll, I'll even name them by name, is the Toulouse uh, restaurant in in South Lake Tahoe, right by the casinos. The chefs there, there's, they were from New Orleans, and they basically said, you know, these Tahoe crowd, you know, crowd are the best we've ever seen in our lives. You know, just hands down. Nice. Out <laughs> of clean, fresh yep. water. Absolutely. Bam. Yeah, crystal clear water. They said that their shells were a little thicker. They uh, surmised because of the colder water. Mm. But uh, uh, they also are quite a bit larger. That Basically, I pulled up 550 crawfish, and they weighed 55 pounds. That was 10 per pound. Nice. Yeah. That's, what we, that's kind of what we do here, too. And you know what's funny is I think one thing is is people don't realize how big crawfish get. And people literally tell me, oh, Mike, we don't have big crawfish in our area. Really? Are you fishing with the gear to catch the big crawfish? Because because we're we have a, we have somebody else that we're we're doing an interview with today, and and they're like wondering what they're going to catch. I mean, there's there's some there's some big crawdads out there for sure. Yeah, well, it's 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 really nice, and I really appreciate all the technical support you guys have given me, and uh, I appreciate I was able to place that big order and, and, and come get a lot of traps at once, and I got a good deal. And uh, I really just looking forward to working with you guys. I know we have many more frontiers to, you know, on baiting and that sort of thing to work out. Uh, and I'm looking forward to working with you. You'll probably like the bait attract, and I'll bring some up with me when I come up and shoot a video. I'm, 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 I'm looking <laughs> into that. Yeah, I'm definitely looking at yeah. that. Uh, Jerry told me about it, and, and I've been looking into it, and and uh, uh, basically, you know want to be trying it as soon as possible <laughs> all right well john thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to visit with us we really appreciate it you bet and good luck with everything thanks thank man you. have a good day We're discussing tagging your traps. Now, I tag my traps, Mike. Do you tag your traps? I tag my traps. And why do you tag them? What, what's the purpose? Well, in the state we're in, legally, we have to tag our traps with our with our name and our phone number, you know, in case they get lost, uh, or if fishing gate comes along and, and you're leaving them out overnight or something, they can kind of see what's going on, who's doing it, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So what are the benefits of uh, tagging your trap besides just being compliant? Well, I'll tell you one big benefit to tagging your trap. Okay, so um, I'm going to put a picture right up here. And uh, um, I was out on the lake. And uh, me and my buddy Jason and Justin were, were trolling along in late November. Well, the lake drops way down, right? 
Mm. And it's kind of like all the sunken treasure comes up. <laughs> we find crawfish traps. We find a lot of crawfish traps and, and people lose them. And so we're, we're trolling along for trout and my, my buddy Jason goes, hey Mike, can you pull over on the on the side of the shore? And I'm like, oh, maybe it's a bathroom break or something. And I go, I go, sure. And he goes, because I'm gonna pick up that crayster trap sitting right there on the shoreline. And I'm like, oh, I'm wow. like, what? And the water got down, brand new lake trap sitting right on the shore. And I'm like, no way, I didn't even see it. And so I pulled over, he he goes out and he and he picks it up and he's showing it. And uh, guess what? It wasn't tagged with a name. Or a phone number mm -hmm. and what it looked like it had it was a creaster trap with a creaster line on it looks like they forgot to put the buoy on it oh, and they no. put it over and brrr, whoop, the whole thing went down in the drink and uh, I couldn't contact them. I would call the person and tell them hey man I found your trap you want it back that's yeah. just one big benefit right there besides the legalities now the next year Jake and I we're going through this place we call Video Bay because we've shot a lot of our underwater video in this bay. And Jake's dropping traps. He's, he puts one trap down, lake trap down. And then we go a little further and he puts another one down. And I'm looking into the water and I think I see what appears to be a buoy. And it's like like three feet underwater. And I didn't want to bug Jake because he's trying to drop the traps, you know. And then as soon as he drops that one, gets all settled, I said, Jake, I think I saw a buoy like way underwater back there. You want to go check it out? And he's like, he's like, yeah. <laughs> so we put around. And sure enough, I look down and I see this this buoy underwater, and I'm like, <laughs> it looks like it's still got ropes spooled up on it. And I'm like, I grab the fishing net and I, I start hitting it, and it unspools and it comes to the surface. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, really? So Jake pulls it in. Here's a picture of Jake with that trap. <laughs> it's this trap right here, man. And it had this orange buoy on it. And it, it had like, it's it's like a real buoy, but like prehistoric. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but it was a it was actually a really early crayster trap. Guess what this trap had on it? A tag. A tag. <laughs> it's funny I pulled it up. This gentleman's actually been to some of our crayster boils. We had these big crawfish boils. <laughs> well, guess what? Guess who I'm gonna call and get this back to? Yeah, the yeah. owner of the trap. I'm gonna call the owner of the trap and I'm gonna give this trap back to him. I'm probably gonna make a video out of it. But I'll, I'll probably invite him over to the shop and give his trap back and, and talk about why you tag traps. But uh, but man, I'll tell you what, sounds like a pretty good reason if you, you lose your good trap and you get it back. Makes sense to me. Now, how hard is it though to tag a trap? It's like it really like, easy. What, what, what would you do? Where can I where can I get a tag if I wanted to put my own tag? Okay, <laughs> what I what I, I know, know, but what I I'll tell know. you what I did. Everybody does it different. I mean, you can you can write it or whatever you want to do or inscribe it in metal. I went onto eBay and I put my name, address, and telephone number, mm -hmm. and I just have these dog tags. They were made them for like a buck fifty each, <laughs> and and they shipped them to me for free. And I was just like, I'll take twenty of those. I made I made ten for me and ten for Jake. Just strap them on the trap. Out they went. Legal. Off we go. Somebody if I lose trap, somebody finds it. I might even get it back. So there you go, tag your traps. It's very important, and if you lose a trap, you just might get it back. Yeah, yeah, all right, on we go. So Mike, what are we gonna do now? Man, you know what? We've got a moderator out of Arkansas named Damon Edwards. Right. This guy's cool. This guy changed crawfishing regulations in his state. Uh, but let's let's get let's get him on the phone. Let's give, let's give him a call. I think you guys are really gonna like this guy. He's been a Craster team member. I've never met him in person, but he feels like a brother because I've been talking to him for years. We're gonna get him on the phone. Hey Damon, it's Mike and Jerry. How you doing, man? Hey guys, uh, not too bad. I got this really bad fever right now called crawfish fever. <laughs> <laughs> We've got that too. It's it's still a little cold here, but we're ready. I was like, oh, I hope you're all right. <laughs> mid sixties, mid sixties is sunshine here today. Oh, uh, nice. Looking 
looking to almost hit 70 here at my house tomorrow. Very nice. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting the fever bad right now. Been out the shop. Very Just nice. We we were we were kind of bragging about you a little bit before we got on the phone. Um, oh, yeah. We've we've I've known you for I've never met you in person, but I've known you for a while, and you've been involved with Craster. And there's kind of some big news in Arkansas. Um, we hear that uh, your guys that that you were involved um, with with some big changes in Arkansas, taking crawfish from being a bait to being something that people are going to consume. You want to maybe tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, I guess we've known each other over four years because this process started four years ago. Um, you know, and, and basically what started it was I bought a Craster trap and then found out uh, just by accident that it wasn't legal. And then I found out, oh my gosh, the other traps that I've been fishing with weren't legal either. Wow. And mm. so uh, <laughs> what I found out was that the Game and Fish here in Arkansas uh, looked at crawfish strictly as bait. And their regulations were based on catching bait. So we had, you know, certain restrictions. You couldn't have uh, the one inch by half inch wire mesh that your traps are made out of. And most of the traps are made out of. Not legal. It had to be half inch square. So that meant I had to wrap the traps in a, uh, a plastic uh, hardware cloth, they called it, and use zip ties to secure it on there so I would meet the half inch requirement. Uh, you know, little things like the, the throat size on the, uh, the cylinder traps, Chrysler cylinder traps, they're two and a half inches. Well, so I so, could only have two inches. So you did something extraordinary. Um, you actually, like, like started talking to people and, and got things changed. What, what happened there? Well, what happened is once I found out what was going on, my first instinct was, well, this isn't right. We need to change these regulations. So I called uh, Arkansas Game of Fish Fisheries and started speaking with them and the, asked the question, how, how do we get regulations changed? You know, and why do we have the regulations we have? Because I wanted to, to really understand it. Uh, turned out, the fact that I approached them in a professional manner and, uh, you know, was very, you know, professional in the way I spoke with them. I didn't fuss, I didn't cuss, I didn't raise cane. I was really trying to learn. So they started giving me information. And I found out that if I presented a proposal that that would actually be looked at by the commissioners. And so that's what I did. I submitted a professional proposal, and I, I just went by to drop it off and found out that the chief of fisheries at the time, he wanted to meet me because nobody had ever done it the way I was doing That's and amazing. So he ran upstairs, and he said, you must be the crawfish guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I started laughing, and I said, well, among other things. And so I gave it to him, and one thing led to another. The biologist actually started looking at things. The, the way I documented it, I just took our regulations and then put my, I don't know, I, I want to say arguments, but that's probably not the proper term. I, I just looked at, okay, we got a two-inch throat. Why? What's the benefit of that? What would, what would it hurt if we had a two and a half inch throat and just kind of took these things one at a time and started addressing them and you know they said it makes sense you know so, what, what was really funny about that is i i knew you were doing that because next thing i knew i was getting contacted by <laughs> arkansas fish and game and they're like we'd like to buy a large number of your traps for uh testing to see if we can make uh better gear legal in our state <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, first you're like, is this like, is this for real? <laughs> it's like, it's like, and they're like, yeah, this is for real. So, pretty cool. Well, you know, back then I had my, I had the Facebook group that I had started here, and the game of fish didn't even know recreational crawfishing was a thing. Yeah. And you know, they looked out there. Well, there's a thousand members or so, and they're going, well, maybe this is a thing. And and then of course after we 
got together and changed it to the Christchurch Arkansas Crawfish Reports, it grew even more. So, yeah, I mean, it was it was really a, a labor of love to do this. It took quite a while, but that's what people need to expect. If they're gonna do this in their state, uh, have patience, be professional, and, you know, I, I know that I spoke with the, our biologists here. They're willing to share data with other states. Yeah, you know what? I, dishes, so. I was talking I was talking to the fishing game down there on a regular basis, and, and they're like, you know what? This totally makes sense. Like, the traps you're using, you know, the minnows don't stay in them. I mean, you know, that's one thing they were worried about is trapping fish. And they're like, they're like, oh my gosh, these were engineered so great. You know, it, it, it's it's safe for the environment. Exactly. And, then, and then the other thing is, is, you know, as small as your trap throat size was, think of the size of the crawfish you guys might find. And I know you guys have huge right. crawfish. <laughs> so. You know, and that was another motivating factor for me. You can't get a 12-inch crawfish through a 2-inch hole. <laughs> <laughs> for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, if you would, you had told me a story uh, not too long ago about how you, you I mean, you didn't, people didn't even know there were crawfish there. And then all of a sudden... Yeah. Tell, 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 tell that story about how you discovered there were crawfish in a storm that may have caused this. <laughs> well, I always knew we had crawdads. I mean, you could find them in the ditches. We had the uh, crawdad castles out in the yards and the low-lying areas and whatnot. But I never thought about crawfish I could eat. These were just, you know, something to play with or catch for bait when we were kids. So when Katrina hit... We had a lot of folks head up to Arkansas from Louisiana and Texas and whatnot. But the folks from Louisiana, a lot of them stay. And, you know, I got to talking to some of these people, and I'm finding out they're catching plenty of crawfish to eat in Arkansas. And I'm going, well, we never thought about catching crawfish in Arkansas to eat. We just, you know, went down to the fish market and bought some that came from Louisiana. So that's what got me started into it, was finding out, hey, we do have enough crawfish here to catch, you know, for a good crawfish bowl. It's kind of, it's kind of funny you say that because, like, when I moved to this state years and years and years ago, it was over 22, 23 years ago, um, I brought my crawfishing ways here, and really, nobody crawfished. And then all of a sudden, people were like, you know, it kind of got out there, and now we're on the top 10 states in the United States for crawfishing in Idaho. I mean, people, yeah. like, learn the, the resource that's right. You can't see it. You know, you drive over a bridge, and there's 10,000 crawfish below you, but you can't see them. You know, and they reproduce so fast. They're just, like, such a wonderful, you know, reproducing uh, food that it's amazing. It's a resource. It's yeah. It's a huge resource. I mean, yeah. Arkansas... We have 60 different species of crawfish in Arkansas. Wow. <laughs> and, and a lot of those grow large enough to eat. You know, the long pincer, uh, the ringed crawfish, uh, the, the red swamp crawfish, just like what they have in Louisiana, we've got those here. Uh, we've got other species that get big enough, but those are the, the main three that I usually go after. And so it's, uh, you know, but we also have a lot of small crawfish some of those are only found in Arkansas in certain locations. So as a result of what I was doing and, and what's going on here, we do have some rivers now that are closed to crawfish. But they're, you know, they have sensitive populations of, of small crawfish that can only be found there. Uh, so you know, it, makes, it makes sense. And you had posted up a, a, a site that, that showed crawfish in every state in the United States. And, and when you click on your state, oh, yeah. some, some states have like 50 species of crawfish. Our state had like six. But every state has edible crawfish. Yes. And, I don't, and people just don't, real, they don't, they don't realize it. They don't realize what a, what a food source we have. You know, and we've got that rusty crawfish. Thank goodness it's not in Arkansas yet. But... That's an invasive species. Yeah. And one of the best things we can do is throw the traps out and catch them. Yeah, yeah. We, we, have, we have we have a number. As possible. We have every state has is starting to get invasive. You know the red swamp, and I mean the best thing we can do is eat them. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That's the best way to combat it is eat them. Yeah, for real. 
Well, cool, Damon. Hey, it was a pleasure talking to you uh, today. Um, and uh, keep up the great work. I'd like to say one more thing, Mike, before we're done. Absolutely. Uh, if, if you're in Arkansas, check the regulations. A lot of stuff has changed. We now have to tag the traps. We can only fish with 10 traps at a time. So, you know, and you and I both know if you've got a good spot, 10 traps, there's no way you could eat everything you call. <laughs> we, uh, we, Jake, Jake and I go out with five traps, and we can catch 100 pounds in an evening. We go out with five traps each, which is 10 traps total in our boat, and uh, we, we have to throw them back. People get mad at us. Jerry and I on video, it's like, we've caught too much, and we start dumping them back in the water. People are like, don't do that. It's like, well, we can't eat them all. <laughs> yeah, well, and I do, I thank y'all so much. Because I'm not sure we could have done this if it hadn't have been for the cooperation of Craster and, and the contribution that y'all made by supplying those traps. Uh, it was it was a huge deal. They thoroughly field tested them. And now I know for a fact that the guy that, uh, the biologist that tested them, actually got his traps the other day that he ordered. So <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we, his personal order. Traps. We've been getting a lot of orders from Arkansas. The the word's getting out and uh and Damon, uh you're a first class guy. Uh not many people would go out and do what you did to, to change your laws. Great job, man. It's probably gonna make a difference in a lot of states. Thank you so much and, and again if anybody get on the Chrysler, uh send me a message if you need help with your state's regulations, I'm happy to tell you what I did. Awesome. Thank you, Damon. That's great. You have a great day, man. It's great talking to you. Y'all too. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. We, Jake and I couldn't eat all those crawfish. <laughs> oh, man, that's a lot of crawfish. Oh, my goodness. Any monsters in there, Jake? There's a nice one. Look at that. Heck yeah, man. Oh, he's like, he's like, I'm a lobster. Oh yeah, man. Holy cow. Oh yes, we've got a new product, Mike. We do. We absolutely do. So you remember that time uh, me and you were out there fishing and we were trolling for some trout, and I <laughs> catch a trout, having a good time, and I said, Mike, would you ever want to do a boil mix or a seasoning mix for some crawfish? Yeah, I do remember. And I was like, Chad, I've been wanting to do our own branded mixes, and I've got an amazing idea, but I have no idea how to do it. And then what did <laughs> you say? I had no idea he had, like, knowledge of this kind so, of stuff. <laughs> I, I told him I grew up in a small town. I've got some knowledge of how to make some creel mix or some just steak seasoning mix, and let's get it done. Well, what are we waiting for? And I'm like, I'm like, well, I have no idea. And he he had the contacts, he had the how to, the whole nine yards. I'm like, are you serious? We're sitting here fishing. We've been crawfishing buddies forever, <laughs> and but it took him to ask me, and I'm like, I'm like, oh man, I'm like, I want to reproduce the best situation that I remember. I, now, I remember going out crawfishing. This is something that I have to share, okay? The early days before Creaster, before Creaster YouTube, um, me and my buddy, we'd go out in the sun and we'd put firewood in the boat, okay? And we would we would take a pot and, and we'd go out and we'd catch crawfish and we'd take them back to shore. We'd make a campfire. And then over hardwood campfire, we'd cook crawfish. And the, the smokiness and the, the flavors that we used, you know, we used a Louisiana kind of boil mix, but, and then the smoke and everything, it was like the best times I ever remember. And I was like, I wanna recreate that. I wanna have a boil mix that's like, like it's like you could do it in your kitchen or outside and it'd be like you're at the campfire. So you're telling me you want to have a boil mix that is like the smell of the campfire and maybe do like a campfire creel that's exactly what we did and 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 not only that but we cut up lemons and put it into it oh my and, goodness and everything we my do my mouth is watering everything everything we do with Craster is like over the top we we put in extremely expensive ingredients through our manufacturer to make it happen but 
you've got this, you got, you got the, you got the Louisiana style taste, but then you got smokiness and real lemon coming out, and uh, um, it recreates great memories. And and we knew. Now I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you one thing. I thought the boil mix was gonna be the thing. Right. And it is. Okay. It is. It's, it's super delicious. Then when we made the the smoky creole, like like I want to be like Babe Ruth. Okay. So, oh, sorry about seeing skin. Okay. I want to be like this is this is if I could do it again, I'd be like I'm like the creole. Pointing to left field. Yeah. Hitting that home yeah. run. That's what the shocker was. Is we thought the the creole. Everybody's talking about the creole because they're, it's not just for crawfish. It's for steaks. People are making like like all kinds of dishes with this. People can't put it down, and they're running out like within a week. So get this, okay? I went ice fishing a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Filleted my trout out, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna bring it home, do some just lemon flavor on it. No, I pulled the campfire krill out of my cabinet, sprinkled that on there, and oh my goodness, that was the best trout I've ever tasted. Yeah, that's what everybody's saying about everything they use it with. Um, I love them both, um, but here's the deal. We're just fishing. Yeah. That's it. That's we just start fishing. Yeah. Okay. And then the great thing about the position we're in now is we can be like, you know what? We're gonna make it a little bit better. And and we did. We hope to try it. You're gonna like it. Um, this is gonna be in everybody's cupboard from now on. This is great. I can't oh, wait yes. till the Creaster Day boils and and do the, the campfire boil mix. A little bit of campfire creole on it. This is gonna be great, you guys. We promise. You know, we had something really special happen um, just recently. We had um, one of our Creaster Oregon members, um, Danielle Bowers. Um, she she actually joined our Facebook page and something really cool happened from it. Jerry, do you want to read um, Danielle's words and, and what she put on Facebook? Absolutely. She says, hey y'all, I've loved being a member of this Crawfish Facebook group. Our family has experienced many adventures crabbing, clamming, and collecting other seafood while foraging on the Oregon coast. Many memories made and immense knowledge gained especially with the support of this community. Our love of shellfish really began because of Craster. I've been so inspired by both crawdaddying and the coast that I wrote a field guide on the subject. And I've got the field guide right up here. Um, you know what? When you look at the pictures of the family going out on these adventures and getting all excited through one of our pages, yep. writing a book, I mean, it's yeah. awesome. Well, it's awesome, man. I mean, I mean, you've told me stories about your family. Chad's told me stories about, and I, and you guys know the stories about my family. That's what's all about, man. What do you think? I love it. There's uh, so many people that have been inspired by Craster over the years that have shared their stories with me, and here's another, um, just amazing. You know, and and I will put um, a, a link to her book. Um, in the comments of this YouTube video and so if anybody wants to go out and and get her book you know what I was thinking this is for this is for Oregon this is gonna apply to Washington California coast also absolutely I mean I mean this is just gonna be a great book Danielle way to go I mean good job good job and, and way to be a super mom and your family your family's beautiful <laughs> hey Look. wow that's a lot of crawfish Look let's check out cooler. the cooler Ready? Checking out the cooler. Check out the cooler. Boom! <laughs> oh man, Cherry. Good job, buddy. Man, I'll tell you what, this is getting more fun than this. Oh, it was fun. You, you know what really irks me though? What? How freaking big our hands are, and how little, <laughs> like we can catch huge crawfish, but our hands make the crawfish look small. Ooh, we are giants <laughs> in our world. <laughs> it's true. You know, if we had little hands,
hands like Chad. Yeah. That would really make our crop look so big. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, the, the, the trials we have to put up with. Uh. <laughs>